Tony, I thought we would watch a little old school world class championship wrestling, but I have to admit, I'm not really a world class expert. Are you? I, I've watched uh, I've watched a lot of it uh, since uh, you know since a lot of it was put on the network. Uh, but no, no, I'm, I'm not with the exception of, I, you know, I was working, uh, back in the eighties, uh, back and, and, and got to meet, uh, uh, Kevin and David. And of course, Gary, Gary Hart worked with us and was working at world-class at the same time. Uh, I think he was booking world-class and, and still making appearances for Jim Crockett promotions back in the eighties Wow, as well. Um, uh, but, uh, no, I'm. I'm Probably no more familiar with it uh, than you are, Conrad. Well, I thought, hey, if we're going to watch World Class and some of their best moments, we need to call an expert. As they used to say on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, we need to phone a friend. Oh, wow. So I pulled out the old handy-dandy Rolodex, and I found somebody who knows more about World Class Championship Wrestling than probably anybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Manning. The life of the party is here. How are you, Mr. Manning? I am fantastic. Appreciate you guys having me on, man. Thanks for coming on. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Have you seen the movie? What did you think of the iron claw? Yeah, I saw the, uh, uh, the Dallas premiere and, um, uh, I, my son, Sean went with me and, uh, you know, he, he's uh mid thirties. So it was hard for me because I know every detail. Yes. Mm, yeah. And so <laughs> You couldn't tell the Von Erich story in two days. That's right. <laughs> okay. Right. And so I finally had to just step back and say, hey, look, look at it from kind of like everybody else is, uh, it, you know, because the timelines and yeah. the, the deaths and, you know, and, and nobody, nobody, everybody knows I'm the one that actually told Fritz that David was dead. And um, so, so it was hard for me. And I told, um, Dirk and I saw him that night at the after party and, you know, and I told, uh, Zach Efron and all them, they did a good job and which they did. And, um, it was funny because they didn't, they didn't consult with me or Kevin really the only two really alive that lived it. Uh, you know, a lot of people can tell the story. We live the story. And so, um, I, I, uh, they thought they got all the tragedies in, but they didn't. And I, I told him a couple others they missed, and he was kind of shocked. I said, you should have talked to us. But overall, my son loved it. So that tells me right there, the yes. fan is going to go see it. They're going to love it. Um, and um, like you said, I think it's by far the best wrestling show that's ever been produced. Yeah. Uh, David, l let me ask you, if they did not consult with you nor, nor Kevin, where did they get their information from? Wikipedia? <laughs> well, you know, uh, when we got to the after party, um, uh, J.R. Schumann was there and he, he wanted to in, introduce me to Durkin. And when we got over there, he immediately said, Oh, David Manning, blah, blah, blah. So he grew up a big, big, big fan. Okay. And, um, the best I can say is, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know where they got their info. I okay. was shocked. Matter of fact, Kevin called me. He had talked to him early and he told them, you need to talk to David Manning. He said, because a lot of it, I don't even remember, but he said he remembers everything. Yeah. And so Kevin called me and said, you're going to get a call from these guys. I, it seems as though they're really going to try to do, a, you know, do the story right. And, uh, you know, not try to bash the Von Ericks. Right. And so, um, I, I, I expected a call, never got it. So, mm. but I liked the movie and I thought some of the casting was phenomenal. I thought Fritz was dead on. Yes. I did not like the way they portrayed Fritz. Um, he was a phenomenal businessman. And I give you a great example. He did not want Kerry to leave Houston. He wanted him to finish school. And he was adamant. He wasn't getting in that ring until he, he graduated. And then after the Olympics got boycotted, Kerry immediately said, "I, you know, Dad, I want to get in the ring. And Kerry pushed and pushed and pushed and finally got him. And I think the other the other big thing in the movie that was off base was uh, Kevin's wife Pam. He didn't meet her at the wrestling matches. She she was a grade behind Carrie and them, and so Kev met her through school with the boys, and chased her for about three months trying to get her to go out with him. 
<laughs> so, so I kind of felt sorry for her the way she was kind of portrayed in the movie. But um, it's like Kristen said, you know, uh, uh, Kevin's oldest daughter. She said, "Hey, I, I didn't even exist." <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, I think we've got a lot of uh, our listeners who really just grew up uh, probably watching the WWF or WCW and now, of course, AEW. But if they go back and they watch on the network, they'll see that you're running around counting one, two, three a bunch. But you had a lot of roles behind the scenes. Uh, Tell everybody what else you did for World Class besides your referee from time to time. Well, um, as Tony said, when I came in, Gary Hart was the booker. And I started in the late 70s and learned a lot from Gary, phenomenal mind as far as Absolutely. being a booker. And uh, so when Gary was there, um, you know, I kind of always had a knack for finishes. And so I got I got plugged in real quick to the booking meetings. And um, and then uh, later on, when, when Gary left and Ken Mantell came in, um, Ken and I were co-bookers. And so, uh, but he, he kind of took the reins as the, as the main booker. And truthfully, I just did all the finishes, <laughs> you know, Ken was good at hearing a finish and then like adding to it or, you know, and so, but I was also, uh, for the last gosh, 12 years I was there. I was Fritz's right-hand guy. I got a call back then you had a beeper and I, I actually had a beeper and one person had the number. <laughs> <laughs> And if it went off, I better make a phone call Yeah, uh, because it was Fritz. And he would call me every Thursday. Sometime it'd be Friday morning. And he'd, if, if he didn't come in that week to the office, he'd want to know how everything went and, you know, what I think and stuff like that. So, um, and then I also promoted several towns. Matter of fact, David, before David died, Fritz let David and I have Lawton, Oklahoma and Tyler, Texas. And we were promoting those. And then uh, after Dave's death, I continued that, and then I picked up some others. I went and promoted Boston, you know, up in the, uh, the backyard up there. Actually, we we did a big show in the – it was called Manning Bowl, believe it or not. And oh, wow. I went up there, and, um, yeah, we kind of got blocked from being able to use the gardens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but you know, things were great. And um, so I, I just kind of had a, a jack-of-all trades. Obviously, I got all the – television exposure being a referee and a lot of people thought that's all I was and then from all the podcast and you know the, the different things and unfortunately I was a pallbearer many times mm-hmm. um so but it, it you know wrestling was good to me and um um I'm glad to see th- the one good thing here is this ex- this exposure of the Von Erich movie is really going to help Ross and Marshall yes and they're both great workers, as you know, Conrad. And so I think that's going to open a lot of doors for them. I told him, I said, you better be ready if you go sign a contract with, uh, you know, New York or AEW. I said, because things change. It's no longer a once a month deal. Right. You know, you're you're at their beck and call and they're believe me, they're going to use you. 